Hey friends, welcome to the channel and to the fourth video of the series where I go through my tips and tricks for getting a 7 in each of my IV subjects. If you're new here, my name is Cindy. I will be attending university to study biomedical sciences this fall. In this channel, I'll be making videos about IB, my university life, and study tips and tricks. So if you're interested, consider subscribing for more of these content. Let's get right into the video. <laughs> For bio, I wouldn't say it's one thing or another thing that got me a 7 like at the end but I've done a series of things that helped me to understand the content at first, helped me revise the content, helped me commit it to memory that I think affects like how I performed in exams. So I'll be going through that process and hopefully you guys can learn some techniques I used to study bio and try to implement it in your own study routine. So whenever I first study bio, the first thing you need to do is get the conceptual understanding in your mind. That means understanding the content before you commit it to memory. I usually start with Bio Ninja because I just like how it's organized, but you can really use any textbooks to get your initial conceptual understanding. It could be your teacher as well who's like teaching in class and that's when you first come into contact with the content and you start to form an initial understanding of what is being taught in the curriculum. For me, my teacher always assigns homework like to take notes before classes so my class she wants us to use Cognity but I find Bio Ninja to be my favorite textbook to look at so I use that that one you can just try out different textbooks and see which one works for you and the reason I use Bio Ninja is because first it's organized in bullet points form which I really like because it tells me exactly what I need to know secondly there's always diagrams accompanied with it which is usually for most textbooks and the third one is that because it's an online textbook there's sometimes like short videos along with it as well which I find it very helpful when I try to visualize something in my mind. If you're wondering which textbooks, bio resources to use, check out this video linked where I tried to rank all of my IB bio textbooks. I really spent a lot of time trying out different textbooks and see what works for me and I found out that Bio Ninja worked the best. When I first approach the content, I read through Bio Ninja first. I actually don't take notes, and this is something some people might find surprising because don't you need to take good notes in order to be able to study well? The reason I don't take notes for Bio is because Bio Ninja has organized them already for you. So Bio Ninja is almost like a note already so there's no need for you to copy things down unless you want to copy it and compile it with other things you found in other textbooks and make your own notes that makes sense to copy it down but i found that when i make notes i'm just blatantly copying things down text by text and i'm not really processing it the way i want it to so therefore i found it to be a waste of time for me to write down things that's already written on the textbook it could be that i have a very bad note taking habit that it doesn't help me as much to process content technically all the bio study guides and you can even find notes online people have already done notes for you so i found that there really isn't a need to make my own notes so after reading content, I go into my class where my teacher teaches the content without any notes as well. I just want to have a general idea. It's okay if you have a committed things to memory, you just need a general idea of what this chapter is teaching and what you need to know. And another reason I don't take notes is because uh, the way my teacher structures her class is that she prepares activities and I think she got most of them from InThinking which is a website organized by a very experienced group of IB teachers. They always have like activities that help the students to like commit things to memory like for example doing some popcorn, like drawing some diagrams and like doing some small projects and things like that. Since we're already doing that in class, I found that it might be more time effective I just use that period of time to commit things to memory and deepen my conceptual understanding rather than doing that outside of class and spending my own time where I could have been doing other things and focusing on other subjects. So next, I start preparing flashcards. Remember I said I don't take notes, it means I don't take physical notes, but I do in a way take digital notes in the form of flashcards. So I don't use anything fancy, I just use Quizlet. And the reason I prepare flashcards is because I know that will be the method 
of how I study. By using flashcards, you force yourself to do active recall, which is basically you need to uh, remember the content from scrap instead of like just reading through your notes. Those notes are in front of you and you have the illusion that you already know everything. When you try to remember it uh, without any tips or clues, it might be actually very difficult. The more you force yourself to remember those content, the more you're strengthening the neural pathways to do that and the easier it will be for you during exams to retrieve that content from your memory. So in terms of flashcards, the first thing I do is I try to formulate a question. I, the way I do that is I look at the IB biology syllabus. For each chapter, there's like bullet points, which are all like syllabus targets. And I just rephrase the syllabus target to make it a question. Basically just add in a command term. For example, in 4.1 under the topic ecology, the first syllabus target is species are a group of organisms that can potentially interbreed and produce fertile offspring. How to rephrase that into a question? I basically just put the command term define because this is obviously a defined question like it's the definition for the word species so I just put define species and I would expect myself to be able to regurgitate this sentence that I just read as the answer to this question guys this work because this sentence is literally the mark scheme for one of the questions define species in one of the past papers so trust me this process works um it might not be exactly the same as the ib biology questions that might come up during your exam but it's the best way to make sure you study everything and best way to make sure that you learn everything that the ib syllabus wants you to do and if you don't want to do that yourself you can go to biologyforlife.com which is a website made by a very very experienced biology teacher under every syllabus target she made questions she made IB style command type of questions. If you just don't want to make it yourself, just look at that one and try to answer that question from your knowledge. And you can literally just do active recall without preparing your flashcards. Actually, she made her own set of flashcards based on those questions and based on the IB Oxford textbook, which is amazing. You can actually just rely on her flashcards. I didn't know that website before. I only knew like towards the second half of my second year of IB. So when I was first starting, I was making my own flashcards. I do understand that some of her flashcards, the answers might, might not cover everything I wanted to cover. So I copy and paste it to my own flashcards and I add stuff to it. So yeah, it takes some time. I mean, like to just copy and paste and stuff, but I think it takes a lot less time than copying down your notes and making like pretty notes for you to study. That's just what I think, so I just found that this method works for me. I will link the flashcards I made down in the description as well, so if you guys want to use it to study, go ahead. I'm not selling any of my flashcards because like I said, none of it is original. It's like copy and paste it from other websites. I'm just reorganizing it in a way that works for me. So if you guys want to use it, go ahead, click the link in the description box and you can access it for free. Basically, every time I finish a content and I make the flashcards, I basically just go over the flashcards over and over again until my unit exam. Another thing I found very helpful is you need to figure out what you're not good at in IB because there's no way for you to study every single thing the day before exam. Maybe for you in an exam, maybe that works. For the actual exam, there's no way you can't cram an entire IB biology syllabus the night before an exam. So you need to really figure out what are your own weaknesses. Which topic do you feel least confident in that you definitely have to go through it over and over again before you go into your exam. Figure that out along the way. How I do that is for an exam, I just use Quizlet, like I said. So I just use the staring like feature on the upper right corner of the Quizlet flashcard. You can stare this flashcard and then you can look over it later. Basically, I just go over the flashcards. I stare all the flashcards that I'm not confident in and go through the stared flashcards. If I feel that I'm already pretty confident in this topic, I will just remove the star from it so that it becomes a normal flashcard. And I just keep repeating that process until I streamline down to like this one or two flashcards that I feel least confident in. What's good is that you revise the content that you're least confident in the most and you revise less of the topics that are easier, that you're most confident in. This really just ensures that you spend your time effectively only revising for the topics that you're not good at. 
at least one week before my unit exam, I start using past papers. While I do past papers, what I do in my brain is try to figure out the topic that IB tests on the most. I rely past paper a lot, like the mark schemes for past paper a lot as part of my notes. Sometimes I just copy bullet points of mark schemes in the flashcard. So when I look at it again, it's all in the flashcard. If you do a lot of past papers, you'll notice that IB really tests students on some topics and they really like to test you on other topics. If you only rely on past papers and you keep doing like the questions that ask topic that always comes out, you will forget the topic that doesn't come out as much. And if it does come out on your exam, you, you will panic. So I tried to make a word document where I have all of my syllabus targets and then I tried to highlight the topics that don't come out as much or topics that IB almost never asked before. And I try to focus on that more before I go into my exam. Now you need to focus on topics that never came out before but might come out in an exam. Look at my cat. Okay, so moving on, what I said before was how I prepare for unit exam. So now I want to talk about how I prepare for the actual exam. If you follow my process of studying like exactly, by the time you finish all the content and study for the actual exam, you've already done a lot of studying to consolidate your knowledge. So now you need to focus on topics that you're not good at. And you, you really need to just put trust in your long-term memory that you remember things that are more obvious. What I did was along the way when I studied all the other unit exams, I did a traffic light color coding method basically that tells me topics that I'm most confident in and topic that I'm least confident in and it's almost like a ranking scale. I did red, orange, yellow, and green so just four colors. Green is the topics that I'm most confident in and red is the topics that I'm least confident in. Over time you basically have this guide that tells you which stuff you need to study for rather than just blindly going through the entire IB biology syllabus and wasting your time. I just keep coming back to this topic of active recall and finding the topics that you're least confident in because I think just these two are the key to preparing most effectively for your IB biology exam. So now let's move on to other tips which you might not know about how you can prepare for IB biology exams. So the first thing is, this is something I noticed, so really let me know if I'm wrong. IB, they reuse the electron micrographs and they reuse some diagrams. One of the most obvious example that I found out was that diagram about a male gamete in like different stages and how it develops to a sperm. That diagram, I think it's used at least three times. So with that said, what can you do if IB often reuse its electron micrograph? Label them figure out exactly what each layer is because sometimes when you look at electron micrographs and diagrams you'll doubt yourself it's often not that obvious as what's noted in biology textbooks where it's colored in your IB exams it will be black and white so if you encounter electron micrographs and diagrams when you're doing past papers label them Talk to your teachers if you have to. If the same diagram comes out again, you have a lot more confidence in determining which layer is. This is also a practice for you. Even though if the same electron micrograph doesn't come out, use this process as a chance for you to practice labeling electron micrographs and practice identifying different layers. I only thought about doing this in the last month before I go into my exam. But if you're starting this curriculum soon or if you're still in your first year or you're starting your second year, try picking it up. I promise it'll benefit you. The second thing I want to talk about is about database questions. A mistake I commonly make is that I try to answer it like a section B question where it tells you to describe like, you know, I don't know, like a mechanism, a process or something. Because I've memorized so many things, I feel like I'm just in that stage where I really want to just show the examiner, look, these are all the things I remember. But I forget that it's not answering the question. What you need to know is that for database questions, all the questions underneath the data question is asking about the data and about the question that is given. You just always have to refer back to it. Like whatever it asks, even though it might be something that, for example, something about like camp physiology, when you think you have to like talk about all the features that are related to camp physiology, look back into the question and see which of those features relates to the question the most. And that's probably the answer. And unfortunately for database questions, I don't think there's a lot of tips and tricks to it. I can only say that I think it does improve over time as you do more database questions. The only thing I can say is to practice. I cannot find any other method that will help you do better in answering database questions. And my third tip is to study with your friends. There's a couple of things you can do. You can quiz each other. If you and your friends 
use different resources, you can help each other to fill in the gaps, which is so helpful. I did that with one of my friends, she's awesome. She uses Cognity the most, while I use Bio Ninja and the Oxford textbook the most. As we study together, we're starting to notice that, wait, why do I have this in my notes while well, you did it? So, and then we just try to fill in each other's gaps. The reason for you to do that is none of those resources are perfect. There isn't a textbook where you can just memorize it, everything and you can ensure that everything written in that textbook will be in the mark scheme for your IB exam. If you're still in doubt about that, go check out the video where I tried to rank IB biology resources. I rambled so long about the weaknesses and the strengths of each of the textbooks I used. I feel like everything I'm doing here are just those simple steps that you have to do over and over again even though it's very mundane but it's the repetition of those very simple mundane process that really helped me to just score well in this subject. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope you guys found some of the techniques, uh, study methods I used helpful to you as well. Let me know what I need to improve in my videos as well. I would really appreciate the feedback if you do give me and leave them down in the comments and if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments as well I will 100% respond to you guys see you in my next video where I talk about TOK presentation and essay and how I got a very surprisingly good mark on those of my two assessments so bye